All right, all right, all right. We're back, and it's time for a donation bonus game. Um, this one is by a community favorite, Rush. A lot of people, um, a lot of people just see me uh, play Deb's Dino deck. Rush has also got a Dino deck. His is more on the unsealing plan, so it's not 100% a Dino deck, but it is a Naya deck, and um, he just he. He just wanted me to play it. So I, I hope you guys like it. We're going to be playing this. Uh, we've got a quick deck tech here, and then we're going to get into a game um, or two here. I might play two with this, and then uh, we'll go from there. So hope you guys enjoy. I do have a little bit of company on the stream tonight. Hope you guys uh, don't mind, but it's my night, and I'm a dad. So Lincoln's going to be here. <laughs> Thumbs up if you do. Subscribe to the content if you're new. Let's get started. Don't shake the computer, Lincoln. Don't shake the computer. You want to you come say hi? Well, then come say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> All right, buddy. Take a seat. Let's sit here in daddy's lap. And let's play some dinos. All right, so this deck's got a little bit more removal in it with Justice Strike. Uh, we do have main board deafening clarions. Where are you going, Link? Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm gonna get tangled up in all the wire. All right. Um, anyway, we've got uh, main board deafening clarions. Uh, this is nothing really new from the last time we played this deck. New uh, shaper sanctuary in the main board. The big addition here is Rush has cut a gore claw and uh, one Lafne or uh, infernal hellion. And that is to make room for a couple extra snapping sellbacks. These have been, uh, according to him, absolutely crucial in the control games. Being able to put out a threat on their turn, making them tap out on their turn to stop this threat. Um, and then just, um, you know, playing whatever you want on your turn. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, against aggro decks, if you can survive to get this in it can usually just be back breaking you know you snap you snap uh, flash in a um, an activator for Sarkin's unsealing and then it's just you just go ham from there so um, that's the main that's the main changes to the main board uh, rush is also got a couple changes here in the side he, he's went uh, a little heavier on remorseful cleric to be able to deal with graveyard uh, shenanigans and things of that nature we've also got to honor guard to stop those enter the battlefield triggers this does kind of interfere with our register alpha a little bit uh, but for the most part to honor guard just buys us plenty of time to get into those later games and then of course we've got a couple settle the wreckage we've got some uh, vine mares against you know the black decks and then a chaos one against control to just grab some extra stuff all right guys that's um that's what we got that's what we're gonna play with um the deck does top out at carnage tyrant there's nothing you know uh, above carnage tyrant on in this deck um lyra dawnbringer just a way to gain some additional life but um almost all of this deck well actually all the creatures in this deck will trigger sarkin's unsealing we're not doing a lot in the early game which is why the main board deafening clarions are kind of a must so let's uh let's see how rush's deck fares S naya unsealing 2.0 here we go what's up guys wow a bunch of you guys have already shown up to the to the stream all right here we go um hope you guys enjoy this i'm gonna crank the music up a little bit get chat where I can see this and talk to you guys okay um, yeah double up stream um, one of our viewers decided you know he, he just wanted to see his deck so uh, that's right teaching Eric jr. how to play MTG that's, that's how it works Kenneth um, you know he, he's got to start somewhere well I mean we can we can definitely clarion on three and that's one of the best things we can do buy a little time get a um, um, Lyra out possibly uh, carnage tire I think we have to keep this uh, we'll just sacred foundry on one and just kind of go from there so ah uh, you just you just didn't like the last deck and you were like my deck can do better my deck can do better it'll play better let's play my deck it will play better I, we could just get a horrible matchup yeah Um, 
It's not necessarily mono red. We haven't seen anything yet. Snapping cell back. Okay. I don't think there's a two drop that I just want to justice strike. Although, Runaway Steamkin probably gets justice striked anyway. Oh man, we really need a land. I, I'm even willing to let him um, pump the runaway steam can uh, a time or two here. This is instant speed, so risk factor. Yeah, we're gonna take four points of damage here. Go ahead, just to strike this. Not take any more damage. We're probably going to be waiting a couple turns on land anyway, so we'll buy time with uh, with Runaway Steamkin there. Nothing from the opponent. Another deafening Clarion. We need some land rush. We gotta have land. How many are in this deck? How many land do you, how many land do we we have here, Rush? Twenty-five? Alright. Twenty-five. We should be able to hit some land, right? We should be able to hit some land. Wizards Lightning from the opponent. Full cost too. Like just the whole thing. Don't look at you. Uh, <clears throat> it's your deck. Did our opponent just have like all of the I guess he just wants the risk factor here. All right, Rubone Crag's not horrible. That allows us to, to get in a Rekindling Phoenix. I think we want to just play the Rekindling Phoenix for our opponent. You know, if we use multiple spells dealing with Rekindling Phoenix, then I'm kind of okay with that. It could be very possible that I just fire off... Uh, all right, well, here we go. He can't swing. Okay, so let's see what we draw. Shaper's Sanctuary. So we can actually get a Shaper's Sanctuary down, which will help us draw some additional cards. Um... I am going to wipe the board here because I don't want our opponent to have a, a like just an amazing turn. So let's just go ahead and do that. He has zero cards in hand. And he might be able to play a spell off the top of his library. He was not. So here we go. Fanatical Firebrand. Does he just use this to shoot? Uh oh. Uh oh. Pyromancer. All the things. He's just. He's rolling off the top of his library right now. Land. You get to keep going, opponent. Wow. Does Fanatical Firebrand just shoot down the Phoenix egg right now? The, our totem? I assume that he does. I mean, we have to take this too. But now Firebrand shoots us. So I'm not worried about the Phoenix token. Do you have a lightning strike? Risk factor. Nope, we're gonna draw cards, opponent. I mean putting cards in your hands not not horrible for us. He does still have to spend four mana to remove the uh, to remove the creature here. All right, so let's draw for the turn. Another Shaper Sanctuary. So we'll cast Shaper Sanctuary. Swing. I kind of want to like gain life here, but I don't think that. 
I don't think we can only cast uh, Deafening Clarion for just life. So, again, we have to, you know, we have to sweep the board. I mean, if we give Life Link, our Phoenix would die anyway. So, I mean, here we're just kind of praying the opponent doesn't get three points of burn off the top. So, he hit land. Tell me there was just another land there. Just land in a land. If, if so, he'll just destroy the Experimental Frenzy here and start casting from his hand. I mean, he's got four cards in hand, so... Um, no, it's it, it's just a 4-3. So, um, as much as I wanted to just gain four more points of life, I didn't think it was enough. Oh, Fanatical Firebrand. All right. Dead to red deck. Just didn't hit the land. Just didn't hit land. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, well, what do we bring in against red deck? Um, Takatli Honor Guard's actually really good. I think I'm taking Shaper Sanctuary out. It just doesn't do much. And I'm going to take one Sarkin's Unsealing out. Um, as far as that goes, we could bring in Remorseful Cleric, but I don't think that's a really good plan. Um, I don't think we have time for Chaos Wand. Settle the Wreckage, maybe. But I think we're just going to stick on the Deafening Clarion uh, game plan and go from there. Deafening Clarion and Takatli are kind of non-bows, but Takatli is just an early blocker. It's an early creature that we can put down. And it stops, you know, Virashino Pyromancer's Enter the Battlefield triggers along with Enter the Battlefield triggers from a Goblin Chain Whirler. So um, there's a little bit of interaction there. We have to mulligan this hand rush. Okay, well, I'll keep. Do we want that? I think we just have to hit our land drops this game. So, Sacred Foundry, tapped, pass. I mean, if we can get to Lyra, we can probably do some work with Lyra. I mean, the opponent knows we've got mainboard deafening clarions. You think we need Settle? I'm not 100% on needing Settle. Bottom the land. But what if we don't get more lands? We did get more lands. Um, I'm going to wait one more turn before a Deafening Clarion. The opponent may just not add much else to the battlefield. Hey, Lincoln. What's up, buddy? Don't beat up the chair. You're going all Kung Fu Panda on it, aren't you? Lands are good, chat. When we got five and six drops, lands are good. Lands are very good. Um, I mean, maybe not this many lands. I think we have to stop this damage. So, I'm just going to fire this off. Just stop the, t the, the additional two points coming at us. If he risk factors here, um, I probably go to 10. I expect a risk factor. What's up, buddy? What's up? All right, we're at 10. Ooh, that's right. Fanatical firebrand. Lyra will help against uh, a lot of this. Oh, more land. Last game we couldn't get a land. Now we can't stop getting land. Let's go, Lyra. You've got to be our saving grace here, girl. Let's go, lady. Uh, she can save us. She can save us, Rush. She can save us. Lightning strike to our dome. How much damage do you have, opponent? Fight with fire on Lyra. Swing for one. Not good, ladies and gentlemen. Not good. 
Um. He can flashback risk factor, and there's not a lot I can do about that. Uh, he'll have to draw cards. I can't. I am going to take this one point of damage. If he doesn't add anything else to the battlefield, I will um, justice strike it. Goblin Chain Whirler. Alright, well, we can wipe that. What are you doing, Lincoln? Man, we've got the. We've even got the cat in here. Okay, Infernal Hellion's not horrible. So let's go Deafening Clarion. And then we can throw a blocker down. It's not the greatest blocker. It only blocks once. Stay away from my coffee. You don't need any coffee. And we get we get domed to the face. Much better deck, Rush. Much better deck. I'm, I'm joking, dude. Uh, it's just not a lot we can do there. Um, let's jump into one more here. And that's game. Right? Not a lot we can do against Red Deck. <laughs> I mean, there's a, a, that's Red Deck, man. I think that... And I said that earlier about the, the, Di the Naya, Naya Dinos deck. Um, you know that none of these decks are just going to be absolutely amazing. I mean, anything that's fast is just going to be—it's going to be mean. Um, would you keep this rush? Not knowing your opponent, we don't know what we're playing against. Would you keep this? It's questionable. I mean, we we don't have anything going on. We're one red or one white from being able to wipe the board. You wouldn't keep it. All right, Mulligan. Would you keep this? Now we're a white source away from being able to do the same thing, but we have Sarkin's Unsealing. Uh, we do have a Scry. Uh, so, I think I'm going to keep... Yeah, Rush wants to keep this one. Ooh, land on top. We do need lands. Like, I, at this point, I can't turn down a land. Even though it's not a white source, I can't turn down a land. So even even a red source, I'm, I'm keeping it. All right. So we'll play a red source and pass the turn. Would you quit, Lincoln? Leave the cat alone, dude. Torturing the poor kitty. Torturing it. Cat's just laying there cleaning himself. He just uh, doesn't care. Does not care. Well, we're getting there, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting there. Turn, turn four, Sarkin's Unsealing. We're one land away from uh, from hitting... Uh, oh, wow. So you just didn't need the mana. So what do we see out, out of the opponents this turn? Goreclaw. I'm going to kill his mana dork. Um, I think killing the Mana Dork's the proper route to go here. I mean, I assume that it's just the Golgari deck. Um, the Golgari deck that's been winning lately is running Druid of the Cow over Land of War Elves. Um, just because of with Fine Finale, uh, you can actually make your Druid of the Cow survive. So, um, all right, we're getting there. We are getting there. Let's get this Sarkin's Unsealing down, and then we can just kind of have fun from here. So this should be a this should be a fun game one if this survives. He may just Assassin's Trophy it, but... Hannah the Hero! My hero. Thank you for subscribing. Right? Everybody's loving the Sarkin's Unsealing. Goreclaw plus Unsealing. Right? Let's do this. Let's do this. There's a justice strike. So, Goreclaw? I mean, Goreclaw might just die here. 
ravenous chupacabra, which is kind of what I expect. But that's fine. I mean, that's that's still okay. If it doesn't die, then we are just gonna go off. Veraska's contempt. Okay. Veraska's contempt. Yep, we're we're 0 and 1 right now. I don't want to play into settle the uh, or not settle, but um, I don't want to I don't want to play into the opponent's um um. Eldest Reborn, so I'm not just gonna like drop a Carnage Tyrant without another creature on the battlefield. So um, we'll we'll see what happens here. So he's just gonna Veraska's contempt this now. That's okay. I mean, we still get to enter the battlefield trigger. We don't get to swing, but we do get to enter the battlefield trigger. Temple Garden, we can bring that in. Taps. Sarkin's unsealing. We'll deal some more damage to the opponent. We get a Carnage Tyrant. Swing three. So now he needs to go like cast out on the dino, and then he needs to have uh, a reborn for his turn. So he needs another kill spell here for the dino. Assassin's Trophy on the dino, which means the opponent does have well this reaper. So let's grab another mountain as there's a lot of red in the stack. Uh, you know, like double red for things. So uh, unsealing plus Daragaz. That's oh, he's got his own Carnage Tyrant. Well, we get Laugh New Hellion. Carnage Tyrants are going to trade anyway. Yeah, the Carnage Tyrants have to trade here. He can't. He can't allow us to keep a Carnage Tyrant. He has to just stick his Carnage Tyrant in front of this. And we'll just Laugh New Hellion. Hit him for another four. Threaten lethal next turn. So now he has to deal with um, Infernal Hellion. Come here, Infernal Hellion. Come here. It amazes me how quick you climb up that chair. My Infernal Hellion. Say hey. Say hey. Gonna say hey. Say hey. There's the there's the ravenous chupacabra we knew about. We knew it was coming. It was just a matter of time. Register alpha off the top would work. You're not getting my phone. Where's your phone? Your phone's in there. Go get it. Go get your phone. All right. Well, gore claw's not bad either. All right. Well, I can always justice strike to remove the block, and remove the blocker. Uh, does Lincoln have Lincoln logs? No, he's got Legos, but he's got one. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah, he's grown. He's grown a lot, James. He's he's grown up a sight. He'll be two in January. He's grown enough that he knew to go get his phone wherever he left it. And he can operate YouTube on a phone. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm not going to keep electronics away from him, though. I mean, we live in a world of electronics, so the quicker he can learn to operate electronics and, and things of that nature, the better off we are. So, 
Well, that's a Varaska Relic Seeker. All right, Lane. I've got to turn your volume down, dude. So he destroyed my Sarkin's unsealing. Okay, opponent. Does he have a kill for Gorklaw? Is the question. All right, here we go. White, red. Hit Ravenous Choop. We'll attack the opponent. We would have had Trample anyway. So we could have just trampled over the Chupacabra. But um, just removing the blocker seems great. Okay. Yes, and uh, he, w he was just, he was so small then. But now he's hes grown a sight. He really has. Um, I think we bring in the Dekatli Honor Guards, um, the Remorseful Clerics here. This is uh, the games for those. As much as I want Shaper Sanctuary, I don't think we get to, uh, to run Shaper Sanctuary. Deafening Clarion's not like the greatest thing in this matchup. It's not horrible, but it's not the greatest thing. Um... Infernal Hellions, also not the greatest thing. Like, the greatest thing is honestly Rekindling Phoenix. Like, just straight up. Um, so you want to leave Deafening Clarion. Take out Justice Strike. Alright, so take out Shapers. Take out Justice Strike. Leave Deafening Clarion. We still need to take out two more cards. So, is it Goreclaw? Go Creature Heavy. like that right like this is the matchup for vine mayor is it not like if you don't if this ain't the matchup for vine mayor then why have vine mayor we're gonna take out some of the board wipe effects and just hexproof can't be blocked right okay so can't keep this and we can keep this as much as I want that Phoenix, I don't think we get a chance to, to use it. We might. We might be able to hang in there. But I think we need to put it on the bottom and pray for a white source. Because we really need a white source for Takatli Honor Guard. That's a Vine Mare. Come on, white source. Okay. White source. No white source. Okay. Come on, white source. Yeah, chat's always a little bit slow, so like, if I have to wait on, on chat, then normally we're waiting a long, long time. So... Oh, come on. We need a white source. Opponent sending a message, getting in with his 1-3. Okay, well. We're going to die. We're just going to die to uh, both games that we've been beat. It was just no land. No land or all land. It seems brutal. Alright, well, we take two. At least the opponent's not being super aggressive. Really like those phoenixes in this deck, right? I'm going to get rid of a remorseful cleric. Twenty-five lands. <clears throat> it's a twenty-five land deck. Um, there's there's twenty-five land deck. We'll just leave it at that.
Sorry, Rush. On par with the last deck. Hey, this is this is how big decks work, man. If you don't hit mana, then you just loop. And that's why I was putting, you know, value. He's got a Carnage Tyrant. We're on two mana. Um. I don't see outs to that, considering we have nothing in the deck that can actually stop a Carnage Tyrant for quite some turns. Um, we'll jump into the sideboard here. It's not just over. I'm taking Remorseful Cleric out. Um, I like Deafening Clarion. Um, yeah, this is the deck for Vine Mayor. But he's got Carnage Tyrants. So I'm going to take out a Snapping Sailback and a Vine Mayor. I don't think we need four Vine Mayor. I get that this is the deck for Vine Mayor, but I don't think we need four. So, well, get down, buddy. Where's your phone? Yeah. All right, so let's try it like this. Something tells me don't, like just keep this. Just keep this and I can play anything. But something also says, all I'm gonna do is hit land now and we're never gonna get anywhere. But I am gonna keep it. We're gonna try to turn to it to Kotlin Guard and go from there. So I'm gonna play this Temple Garden tap. Lincoln, go ham, bro. Deb's probably better. Maybe. I I built a different version of this deck, and I really like how my version turned out. Not that I'm going to go play that now, but I may play my version of this deck soon. Um, I spent uh, quite a few hours tuning this deck and trying to come up with, you know, what this deck needed to be able to survive in a meta. And I think I got somewhere with it. I really do. So... We'll see. I'm just gonna pass. Um, we're just gonna leave our Takatli Honor Guard here. I mean, as of right now, his Explorer creatures, things like that, they don't do a whole lot. Um, Jade Light Ranger is not the, the most amazing thing in the world when you have a Takatli Honor Guard on the battlefield. Three mana. Wow, so he just, Raska's Contempted. A Takatli Honor Guard. All right, I just, I just wanna, I just wanna point that out that that happened. So we'll play Gorklaw and we're set up for her Carnage Tyrant next turn. So now he has to kill our ramp. Another Veraska's Contempt. Did the opponent hit land? Lincoln. He's dipping his finger in my coffee. And then... Son. I love you. I do. I do. Sometimes you do some stuff. Yeah, you do. Sometimes you do some stuff. What did you do? All right, here we go. Go play with Fox. Go get the kitty. Elvis Rejuvenator. I put this in my Naya deck, in my version of Naya. I think the I think the cards are exactly what you want. No Clarion on the Druid? No, I'm probably going to Clarion here, though, if we don't hit a land. Um, like, so, he's been a little hurt on land, so Clarion here means that we get to, um, we get to keep him off Carnage Tyrant a little bit longer. <sighs> Quit, son.
Turns out ramping is good when all your spells are five drops. Yeah. There's the Jade Light Ranger. Jade Light Ranger reveals Jade Light, Jade Light. He left Jade Light on top both times. So, did we get a chance to Sarkin's Unsealing here? I mean, he may just give us a land for the Sarkin's Unsealing with his uh, Assassin's Trophy. And if he does, then... That's fine. If he doesn't, then we'll cast Carnage Tart and... As soon as we get the opportunity. Otherwise, we're going to cast, like, Rekindling Phoenix, do some damage. Yeah, I know, buddy. I know. I love you, too. There's a Jade Light. So he's definitely trying to get ready for a Carnage Tyrant. Milled, or sh revealed an Assassin's Trophy. So Assassin's Trophy's on the top of the library. He, uh, he got an Overgrown Tomb and an Assassin's Trophy. Did you bump your knee going down? You did. Well, get down before you hurt yourself. No? You coming back? Yeah. Well, there's the Assassin's Trophy, and the opponent's got another Assassin's Trophy on the way. Uh, we kind of, kind of expected this. I'll get another mountain. At least we can cast Carnage Tyrant. Um, all right, well, here's some more. So we can go Carnage Tyrant. Pass. I hope he doesn't Eldest Reborn here. You're, I'm not making you jump. We're not one, two, three, and we're not doing it. We're not going to one, two, three. Does he have stats here? Is he about to status us? All right, let's go for it. Let's see if he statuses it. No status. Link. He's wanting to go one, two, three, and me throw him up in the air. One time, okay? One, two, three. Yeah? All right. All right. Well, Clifftop Retreat's not horrible. Um, let's let's go ahead and hit another Carnage Tyrant here. Because I expect the opponent to have his Carnage Tyrant coming up. Um, we've also got, you know, a Phoenix into Deafening Clarion. And just swinging with a life game may be enough. So... Lincoln for the win, that's right. Golgari Finebroker. Alright, he's gonna get back a Jade Light Ranger. I cast Jade Light right now. Uh we'll go Phoenix. I'm going to swing with Carnage Tyrant here. We know the opponent still has an Assassin's Trophy. Um, because he drew it earlier and then he played a different one. Or he put it on top of his deck and he played a different one. So we know he's got an Assassin's Trophy. Clifftop 
Clarion. I don't think we're in a Clarion position yet. Roscoe's Contempt on top of the library. Well, okay. Kind of wish the opponent would add a little bit more to the battlefield here. Yes. I'm, I'm going to end up losing this Phoenix anyway. Yeah. So, I'll go ahead and do this. If he wants to fine broker into a fine broker, then fine. I assume that's what the opponent wants to do. No, just he wants to Assassin's Trophy the, um, the Phoenix. So he didn't want to use the Roscoe's Contempt that he's got coming. Well, we're going to Deafening Clarion. White, red, green. I'm also going to give Carnage Tire lifelink here. And <clears throat> we will put out our Phoenix so that he will have to... Um, He'll have to actually Baraska's Contempt this before he can uh, do something like um, just um, um, Eldest Reborn. Like I'm trying to play around Eldest Reborn, so now he has to cast that, which means we get another swing with our Carnage Tyrant. Elvis Rejuvenator. That doesn't really slow down Carny T much. I hope I get another creature. Registrar Alpha off the top would be just phenomenal. I'm gonna hold the land. What you got? Where'd you get that? So something's missing a screw now? Yeah. I wonder where that goes to. It's probably one of your toys, huh? Did you destroy another toy? I bet you did. No, get that. Give it back. Memorial to Folly getting back a fine broker. No. Okay. No. No, I can't give this to you just because you cried. As much as I want to keep you quiet, just watch watch your phone. Golgari fine broker. I mean, the opponent has to jump block here. Um, he has to put both of these in front of. So he fine brokers back a J Light Ranger. Board wipe off the top. We'll do it. Deafening Clarion will get the job done right here. Vine Mayor doesn't hurt. So let's go ahead and kill both of his creatures. If he doesn't block with both, he is dead. Because three points of trample damage will kill him. Um, and then we had a Vine Mayor to follow it up. So um, Parenting advice from Cyborg MTG. Right? The little nuggets. The little nuggets. Uh... Take parenting advice from everyone. Listen to none of it and make your own decisions. Um, only you can parent your child. It takes a village to raise a, raise a child though, so <clears throat> let other people take care of your child while they have them, you know. Like, they've got to deal with it. The kid will learn, hey, around this person I can't do this, around this person I can't do this. But at grandma's, at grandma's, we get everything. Okay, so um, going back and looking at, at Rush's deck, um, I think Shape Shaper Sanctuary only comes in against like um, targeting decks. I don't like this card. I don't think this card's where we really need to be. Um, Deafening Clarion and Justice Strike are fine. I, I, I'm not 100% on snapping Sailback. It's just more things that we can't... What'd you do, man? Who are you yelling at? 
Anyway, I don't think that uh, snapping sellbacks exactly where I want to be. Again, when when I tested with the deck, I played multiple games with the deck. And I didn't... Why do you throw your phone like that, man? That, that's not cool. Go get your phone. Don't throw your phone. Go get it. Go get it. No, go get it. Don't throw your phone. Go get it. Go get it. Get down and go get your phone. Okay, um, anyway. I, I was dead set on treasure map. Um. <coughs> got there! Right? Got there! Um, three more matches. Just three more matches, right? I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I can't do three more matches. Um, personally though, I do think that the deck does have some legs. I think that there's some things you can do. 100%, I am, I am all in on treasure map. I do think you need some ramp elements in the deck. I chose Elvis Rejuvenator, um, just because I want the, I want the, um, I, I want the, uh, the deck to have, like, just a blocker. I don't need that blocker to have to stick around to give me my ramp. So I just want to, like, grab my, my, my one piece of ramp, and then I want to, you know, use that as a chump blocker to buy a little additional time um, so that I can set up for those opportune moments to deafening Clarion. So I went with a three-drop creature in the deck that can actually block. We, at one point, we had, like, Wayward Swordtooth here and some other cards. And, again, I just think that the deck just needs... You know, some type of ramp between one and three, and then, like I said, I don't necessarily want to want to have that ramp like removable. Like I don't want them to just remove that piece, and then bam, we've lost our ramp. So I didn't go for Land of War Elves or Druid of the Cow. Um, I wanted to go with something like uh, Elvis Re uh, Elvis um, Rejuvenator here, which you know lets me look at the top five cards and we put a a um, a card in uh, from the. Um, from the top that if it's a land it enters the battlefield tap and then again we just use the rejuvenator so um <laughs> uh who says the word optimize optimus i don't know optimus prime i um i also um you know did go with the three hellions i'm still on four sarkins unsealing but that could probably be three um i also like the gore claw i like the synergies with gore claw so, um, I'm still on three Gore Claw. I'm, it might be worth it to cut one here. Personally, I don't like Lyra in the main board. And I think the sideboard was a little too much on, um, on certain spells that we just didn't have room for, for other, um, options. Like, I just don't think we had room to, to protect ourselves against, you know, like Red Deck and stuff. So, I actually went in with a couple extra Fiery Cannonades. These were really, really well against Red Deck. Um, you can even, um, you can even, like, stop the, um, what's, a, what's a Runaway Steamkin, uh, with the triggers on the stack, stuff like that. You can just, you know, wipe the board, get rid of some of their creatures and stuff like that. Um, so I like the, um, the Fiery Cannonade. Fiery Cannonade's also really good against, um, it, uh, really good against, you know, cards, um, like, um, March of the Multitude. So I went with a couple versions of, uh, Fiery Cannonade. Um, I did like Vine Mayor in the deck. I didn't think um, I didn't think that Vine Mayor was that important. I do want a couple of him, um, so I I, I kind of went with uh, Vine Mayor in mind. Uh, I do think that Vivian Reed is a must in these decks. I think that you ha you have to have an answer for the flyers and stuff like that. And then um, Sunbird's Invocation. Now this this should probably be uh, a copy or two of Karn. Um, so I, um, I've currently got Sunbird's Invocation here because I think that the deck needs some more draw, even though we've got, you know, Treasure Map and stuff like that. Treasure Map's a great piece of ramp, guys. Like, don't get it wrong. Treasure Map is a wonderful piece of ramp. Um, it also helps you have card selection, helping you not draw lands when you don't need lands, helping you get two lands when you do need lands. So, um, I liked, um, I like Treasure Map in the deck for my ramp, and again, I went with the Elvish Rejuvenator. Um, there is a little bit of a non-bow there of being able to play Elvish Rejuvenator the turn after you play, um, your Treasure Map. You're really not going to be doing a lot of greatness, but you're not going to be activating the Treasure Map that turn and stuff, so. Um, but most of those turns you can take off. 
Um, and then in the late game, you know, Treasure Map's just going to draw you additional cards, which will give you more threats, will help you get to more Sarkins on Ceiling, things like that. Um, again, Sunbird's Invocation is just one of those cards. Like, I really like the card, and I think that uh, this is where I would have went. Um, but um, overall, like, that that was uh, the idea that I went with the deck. We had some restrictions, you know, hey, you know, build around this, do, you know, do this and this and this, have these certain cards in your deck. Um, to build this and you know Goreclaw was one of those Lyra was one of those otherwise Lyra probably would have came out of the main deck for um, Shalai um, I really like Shalai in the deck even though she doesn't trigger Sarkin's Unsealing but I do like Shalai in the deck um, all in all though like I I have a lot of fun with these Sarkin's Unsealing decks and we play quite a bit of them here on stream so I mean it they're just fun so um, no, this is nowhere near a Risk Factor deck. I mean, if they let you draw the cards and you draw Registor Carnage Tyrant, yeah, like Phoenix, like you gotta have a million mana to play all your cards out. So um, I don't think I don't think that I want a draw card like Risk Factor. Personally, I would rather have a draw card that taxed their um, artifact and enchantment removal a little bit more. So I went with um, Sunbird's Invocation. I mean, you cast um, you know a seven mana card or six mana Carnage Tyrant off of a Sunbird's Invocation, and you know you're looking at looking at six more cards, getting a free spell out of it. Um, as you're casting you know these big spells, uh, you cast a Red Star Alpha, you go get a free um, Sarkin's Unsealing. You cast a Sarkin's Unsealing, you go get um, you know Infernal Hell. I mean, it's, it, it gets crazy. Um, Sarkin's Unsealing also doesn't care if you cast it from your hand or not. So it'll actually catch the triggers from the other cast and stuff. So I like Sunbird's Invocation with Sarkin's Unsealing. Even though it's another do nothing that turn kind of card, but you know, that was um, that was the, the card I chose for my card draw on the sideboard. But uh, there's a ton of different ways you guys can play this these decks. Um, Deb's got his version of it. I have, you know, toyed with this version for. Um, for um, Rush, clearly he did not like any of my suggestions. Um, we only we didn't get any Temple Gardens out of out of Rush. Um, by the way, the mana is fixed in this deck so that you have the exact number of sources needed to be able to cast every spell on turn. Um, so like we tweak the mana, we really made sure that the mana was exactly where it needed to be. I think we're what 16 red sources. Um, 13 white 14 um, green something like that um, so that allowed us to you know make sure that we can cast carnage tire and make sure that we can cast red store alpha when we need to we can definitely clarion. on we even um, the, the hard part was getting the guaranteed on justice strike we're only at about 70 percent chance to cast justice strike on two um, which I'm, I gave I, I conceded on that so um, I conceded on like trying to get the mana right so that we could cast Justice Strike on two. I'm just not really worried about it um, because like the more I tweaked on that, the more it upset the rest of the mana. Um, so uh, we basically just went making sure that we can hit our Deafening Clarion on three, and then um, just kind of making sure that we could hit all of our other cards on turn. So um, yeah, um, as long as we get mana, right? Well, that's what treasure maps for, man. That's what treasure maps for. You gotta have treasure map, dude. So. Um, seriously, I know that you picked up a play set of treasure maps, so put them in the deck, test it. Treasure maps where it's at, dude. That's the real card this deck needed, so. Um, this is your favorite version so far? Well, then maybe I'll play my version at some point. Um, we played it just, stream is offline. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. So, like, most of that got cut off. But, but all in all, like, this is my version of the deck. I'll try to play it for you guys at some point. Uh, maybe a week or two. I mean, we've seen a lot of this this lately. So, I, I kind of want to let Naya rest a little bit. I think people are going to get burnout on Naya. So, um, I, um, I'm i going to let Naya rest a little bit. But I'll keep this deck laying around. And maybe even tweak with it a little bit more. Uh, and go from there. Really? It brings me it brings me a fat pack box from from back when I started playing magic rise of the Eldrazi all right I haven't been playing that long since uh, like 
2009, 2010, something like that. Played a little bit in uh, junior high, but, you know, that don't count, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Rush, try it with the treasure maps, dude. Treasure map really helps you hit your mana, so, um, great card. Guys, that's all we've got for tonight. I hope you enjoyed the streams, and we'll see you next time here on Cyborg MTG. i got to get this boy to bed. Bye.